Uh, sorry, but as it is, the question is not posed very correctly. It's not complete. The best answer I can give you would be a percentage. So you can calculate the yeast in proportion to the amount of flour. But you know, my channel is dedicated mostly to non-geeks, at least for now. Therefore, I tend to assume that if I give you a percentage, many of you will have no clue what to do with it. And then there are the cool ones who watch this video. So how do you phrase the question correctly? Well, I'll try something like that. How much yeast should I put in my pizza dough if I use X grams of flour? So you tell me something about your recipe. Ideally, you should also add something about your desired timings. Something like, I want my dough to be ready in a couple of hours. Or maybe I want my dough to be ready tomorrow, after 24 hours. Finally, you should also tell me what kind of yeast you have in the fridge, even though I'm going to explain why sometimes this could be less relevant. Oh, since I mentioned different kinds of yeast, let me tell you something important about it. I think it's fair to say that most of the time we have either active dry yeast or instant dry yeast. They are basically dehydrated version of fresh yeast, which in my experience is not always easily found unless you live next door. In this case, you just can go to the mini market at the corner. The process to make active yeast is more aggressive and it kills more cells than the process to make instant yeast. And this is why the same amount of active yeast contains less yeast cells than instant yeast. Now, as I said, the difference may not be relevant depending on the condition. And what conditions? In general, the longer the rising time, the less significant the difference is. Uh, because over time, active yeast will eventually catch up with instant Never mind the appearance, never mind the direction for use by the producer. You can just dissolve any dry yeast in water, just like I do and show all the times, and then continue as usual with the flour and salt. So now we have enough details and the complete question could be how much active dry yeast should I put in my pizza dough if I use 500 grams of flour and I want my dough to be ready in a couple of hours? That's cool, that's a precise question, so I can give you a precise answer, that is, by grams. A batch of pizza dough made with 500 grams of flour will be ready in around two hours by using five grams of active yeast. I can also convert, for instant yeast, you should use four grams. Remember, I'm doing this conversion because we're discussing a short rising time, two hours, just like I did in this video. There is this ratio between active and instant yeast. Common knowledge is that we should use around 25% more active than instant yeast. There is also a fresh to instant yeast ratio, that is 3 to 1, meaning you had to multiply by 3 the amount of instant yeast your recipe calls for. The fresh to active yeast ratio would be 2.5 instead. Now, I understand this might seem a lot, but no worries, if you want, just leave me a comment with the type and amount of yeast you use and I will help you with the conversion. Anyway, let's see another example. Let's change one single detail in our original question and ask how much active dry yeast should I put in my pizza dough if I use 500 grams of flour and I want my dough to be ready in 24 hours? It's 0 0.1 grams. I know it sounds ridiculous. I think I hear you saying, how the heck I'm supposed to measure the thing? What is it? Just a single grain of yeast? In the end, it's quite easy. Actually, you probably know that I always suggest using a kitchen scale, right? I suggest buying another one, this. It's really cheap, as you can see yourself. There is a link in the description of the video and it does the job. And who knows, maybe this could be your first step towards becoming a true pizza geek, while the second step would be a nice thumbs up. Finally, for these two examples I gave you, the procedure requires the dough to be at room temperature, just like Neapolitan pizza. Not sure if you watch my video about it, it's in the usual place. For the sake of this video, let's assume that room temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. And if you're wondering if the last amount I mentioned, those 0.1 grams, are even enough, 
if you think that maybe the amount is so small that your dough won't even rise, remember that yeast will duplicate inside the dough as long as there is some oxygen around. So to an extreme, I can put even one single cell of yeast into my dough and be sure that the little one will slowly populate the whole environment it's living in. Last two quick remarks. First, if you're still watching, I think it's time to subscribe to my channel, it's free. Second, you know, I always recommend a long rising time. Why? Well, this is what gives more taste, more complexity in the flavors, because while yeast carries on its metabolism, it produces different byproducts, in particular some acids that are the aromatic components of our baked goods. So while the two-hour dough will taste a bit uh, plain, you can expect your 24-hour dough to be fairly more interesting. In general, the longer the rice, the more complex the flavors become. My two cents here, beyond around 48 hours, I cannot really taste any big difference, to be honest. Maybe just me, of course. Do some experiment and see what your taste buds decide. Speaking of experiments, it's up to you now to find a balance between the timings you want or need, maybe you are on a tight schedule, and the amount of yeast. Try to work out something in between the two situations I described here, and also be always mindful of the room temperature. Do you remember that I say 20 degrees Celsius? Well, that's because I think it's quite common in our houses. Any deviation means that you had to adjust accordingly the amount of yeast to keep the same rising time. For example, if I wanted to make the two hour dough, but the room temperature was 22, 23 degrees Celsius, then I will try using four grams of active yeast instead of five. Similarly, a room temperature of 17, 18 degrees means we need to increase the amount of yeast. I will try with six. If you're giving up the fun of experimentation, then just stick to my tutorial. Or if you're really ready to up your pizza game, consider my video course.